I mean, that's why those things that I, I think this is a good idea. Because it goes away from Let me ask you a question. I think maybe you can go to a new city. How do you find your way around? Right. If you don't have a map, you don't know where to go. But at least if you have a map, you have an idea. Yeah, this is just fun. But you understand what I'm saying? Is that if you're looking at a card, stop at Harrisville for a moment. Let's see whether we can play. play. Yeah. Okay. I still have it. I did that one Oh, he was 10 inches long. I was around him. <laughs> no, I think we're doing the intelligence <laughs> ideas <laughs> and <I'm> Plotinus. <laughs> So hard to do this from behind here. I was going to say, I filmed it. Thank you. Is that what you said? You did. You just think that whispering will keep you off of live tape. This, this microphone is so sensitive, it will pick up him opening a piece of candy. So we have to be careful yes. when Pierre starts. You know, crackle, crackle. I'm just letting you know. So, talking, talking like this isn't going to help. We will play. Now, well, China is a very interesting thinker. And uh, to get into the realm of intelligence presupposes we know how to play with these two words. What page are you on? And therefore, uh, I can <coughs> suggest something. Eleven, ten, eleven, twelve. And then we'll proceed from there. Huh? What page? 54. Uh, Thanks, man. 54 in the Good. section 10. Very curious, interesting. If we go strictly with what he's saying, we're going to come to rather curious conclusions. Basically, the, the riddle is uh, real problem is how do you go from here to here? Basically, that's the issue. How do you go from one to the other? And it's not easy, but it's, it's uh, we'll do it. So I suggest we do this. We just explore these two ideas and then see how they relate, especially picking up from 10 on. All form in the sense realm comes from above. What is not form does not. Hmm. Hmm. Only form. A 
but there's nothing that is in conflict with nature any more than in art. There can be anything inartistic or in a seed, lameness. For a lame leg is the result of a thwarting of the seminal reason or a marring of the achieved form by some accident. Ah, hey. That means um, when you're looking at the world of things, the relationship between the two is you have another idea called only the ideal. And down here, it's the ideal minus subtract accidents. Right? Things that can be said to be subtracted from the ideal. In the intellectual realm, all is in accord with nature globally hey, and in detail. Qualities, quantities, numbers, magnitudes, origins, conditions, actions, passions. All of that, globally and in detail, all of it. There's just one difference. In the intellectual or the intelligible realm, there's eternity and inclusiveness. Ah. Ah. Right. Well, that's pretty good. Uh, Turned it all inclusive, you see. And, uh, it's all at once. Huh. Uh, the perceptible is always an intellective essence and uh, a share in life. It is identity, difference, motion, rest, mobile and immobile, essence and quality. It's a sharing. Now here's his great quote. All is essence there. For everything real, for every real being must actually be and not just possible to be. Quality never separated from essence. So all the essence therefore all real being must actually be, must be fully being what it is. Sometimes they call that energia, right? All is fully what it is, uh, must be actually be what it is. And actually, in the fullest sense, actually. Are there in the intelligible realm only the forms of the things of sense? Or are there other forms as well? Ah, uh, okay. We must examine that question of the man-made. For in the intelligible realm, no evil. Evil in the lower realm is brought into being by need, privation, defect. Incapable, right? All that stuff is incapable of attaining form. Therefore, what do we have to do? We have to take a look at it. The man-made. We must first examine the question of the man-made. Okay, next section. That's what it is. Man-made. The imitative arts. Painting, sculpture, dancing, pantomime. Ah, products of the lower realm. The models. Now this is perhaps most interesting for moderns, you know. This section really should be in physics. 
the models they mimic are found in the sensate. For it is visible shape or motion or symmetry that is copied. <coughs> symmetry that's copied. It would be false to ascribe them to the intelligible realm except in the sense that they are contained within the mind of man. Here we go now. On the other hand, to proceed from the observing of the symmetry of living things to the symmetry of all life, is to exercise a <coughs> that faculty which even here below knows and contemplates the perfect symmetry of the intelligible realm. Okay, that's all we need. Mm -hmm. So it's steps, right? So, mm -hmm. the world of things. Right. We're going to observe symmetry. Plenty of examples in nature all around us. One, right? See, observe it. And then you pull out from that, right? The symmetry of all the living things. Or of life. Right? A step above it. You do that, you do this, and you're doing something with the mind. Hey, you're doing something with the mind. You're exercising that part of the faculty which even here below, hey, this is the exercise of the faculty. Knows. Right. Right. That knows and contemplates. Next step, see? Mm -hmm. That knows and contemplates the perfect symmetry of this realm. So this. is perfect symmetry. Hmm. It's a kind of a yoga, isn't it? Mm -hmm. right. Observe, sense uh, symmetry in visible things. And you pull back, and then you get semi right, you're up pulling back and you're looking at it in principle, the symmetry of all life. And when you're doing that, what are you doing? You're exercising the faculty that knows and contemplates perfect symmetry. Oh, one, two, three. The same must be said for music. Skills, they draw their principles and patterns from the intelligible realm to the extent that uh, symmetry is their goal. Ah! Hmm. So in the arts, we'll call those the arts, Okay. Yeah. To the extent that they bring them down into contact with the realm of sense, the principles and patterns are not wholly of the intelligible, except uh, 
contained in the mind of man. Right? So, they, so they're guided by symmetry. Right? As a principle, the winners, right? those who have mastered those kinds of arts. Same thing with agriculture. Medicine, gymnastics, oratory, generalship, administration, sovereignty. By contributing beauty to action, they introduce in their exercise an element from the intelligible and from such knowledge as is there, right? Ah. Well, they add beauty to their works. Right. Huh? That's right. <coughs> Geometry. And uh, much more philosophy. But you know what? Enough of these arts and artifacts. Let's go further. Now he goes into the realm of ideas, and this is what we're after. Twelve. Now, we're going to uh, add something here. The idea of man exists in the intelligible realm. As well as the idea of a reasoning man, artistic man, the arts themselves as products of intelligence. Five categories, right? Interesting. Right? The idea of man, rational man. Right? Good old rational man. Right? Artistic man. And the arts themselves. Since if they're products of the intelligence, to the degree they're products of the intelligence, and therefore they're going to uh, incorporate with them within themselves this great concept of symmetry and beauty. This too must be remarked. Ideas will be of universals, not Socrates, but of man. Individuality, you know, us particulars, the traits of all are not all the same. One has a nose that's flat, another a nose that's hooked. Two shapes of noses should be considered differentiations in, in the human species, as they are in the animal kingdom. But they don't participate in universals. Now we're all set. Now the shift here, big nice interesting shift right, for 13 and 14 then we'll jump earlier. Now let's return to the question. Are there in the intelligible realm models only of the things of sense? That's the issue. How much of it is it? How much? First, 
There is no reason to think that everything here below is an image of a model. The soul is not the image of soul as such. Soul differs from soul in nobility and is, even here on earth. Each authentic soul is temperate and just. There is, even in our souls, authentic knowledge and compounded not of images. <coughs> Same things that are here above, that are there above. He can contemplate things above. To that degree, he's uh, participating in another world, a higher world. There's even in our soul's authentic knowledge, compounded not of images and reflections of the rational amid the sensate, but of the same things that are there above and are here below merely in another manner. I, the, the ideas are not spatially estranged from us. There's two great sentences. Wherever there is a soul that has arisen, that has risen from its bodies, the ideas are there. The realm of sense is localized. Intelligible? No. So whatever the freed soul attains to be here is also there. So if he, right, that separation of the soul from the body, ancient goal discussed in the Phaedo, whatever it experiences there, well, he's here. Whatever the freed soul attains to here is also there. Ah! That's a very tough <coughs> proposition, you see. Uh, we could take a look at how he describes what the freed soul is in the uh, Phaedo and list it then we can compare what he says here with this. And this, see, there is a... But let's push it one more step. You know what we mean by the sensate is the visible. then the intelligible contains all of it and more. So now, pulling together his conclusion 14. Okay, we're gonna now move to Primals. One must admit that the existence of such a primal as this, which embraces all that is in the intelligible realm. Got to admit this. The existence of such a primal. What do we mean by that? That which embraces all that's in the intelligible realm. But how is this possible if this is primal, is really one and partless and the beings are multiple? <clears throat> hey, how is multiplicity to be added to unity? How do they all exist? Why is the intelligence all existing things? Whence comes the intelligence? Ah, we need a different approach for that. So, uh, we've got three paragraphs. 
<clears throat> First, the intelligence derives from the one. What? Only what is of the noblest. In its ideas, there's nothing base there. That points to the soul, which drawing upon the intelligence takes from matter certain other things. These are included. That's <clears throat> it's easy to handle this question when we come back to the difficulty of how the multiple can become from the one, which is the section on the one. So we have to go to the last two paragraphs. Actually, there's a one sentence in one of them. The intelligence are not to be included under the ideas. What? The products of putrefaction stem from the soul's inability to bring some other things into existence. As to the arts and crafts, all that are be, all that are to be traced in human need are contained in man as such. Well, okay, as to the soul, there is anterior to the soul, soul as such which is either the universal life or that life which is in the intelligence and before the soul in order that the soul should be. So whatever this freed soul attains to here is also there. So, therefore, uh, we are working our way up. See, we're going from the everyday world with puzzles. These are puzzles. If the soul separates from the body and one experiences that state of mind that's described in the different works, including the Phaedo, it doesn't match this, unless you go for what he's saying about the fact that the idea of man, rational man, artist, etc., that you're following one, two, three, four. Now, It's good that we have that because now we can proceed into uh, the intelligence. Now that's three, to, <clears throat> three, five, six, and seven. Okay, all right. <clears throat> We're still pushing now. We're going to push the same. Here we go. The realm of the intelligence. We want to see whether we can clarify some of these mysteries. You know what? We have to inquire closely into the nature of the intelligence. You know, like, uh, talk about this intelligence. These are ways of talking about it, but uh, <coughs> that's the real question. 
you can talk about hypothetically ideas can be looked upon in this way and people can have these kinds of experiences. So what? Does it truly exist? I mean, this is an experience man has, let us say it's valid as an experience. Does that prove, though, that intelligence exists? That's where we're going. Great exception. <clears throat> And therefore, we do not agree we need a reader. Here I am just loafing along, reading, and I could get someone else to do the work. How about, go ahead, loud? Come on up front, can you come forward? Or loud, stay there, as long as it's loud. It is not unreasonable to identify it simply with authentic essence and existence. It, it will pick him up. That's good? I think so, okay. yeah. Okay, just a little louder. Okay. It is not unreasonable to identify it simply with authentic essence and existence. Ours, however, must be a more cir circuitous route. We must decide whether it really exists. There is something ridiculous, surely, about questioning the existence of the intelligence. But there are people who do it. So let us inquire whether it really is as we say, whether it is separate, whether it is identical with existence, and whether it is the seat of the ideas. We shall do this right now. Clearly, everything we call being is composite, whether man made it or nature. The man made, with its metal or stone or wood, is not achieved until skill, by the induction of a form, has turned it into statue or house or bed. The natural, however, is even more complicated. I mean what we call a compound, sort of thing that can be analyzed into constituent elements and form, as man, for example, into soul and body, and the human body into four elements. Now, finding everything to be made up of materials, a shaping form of itself, the matter of the elements, is formless, one naturally asks, whence comes the shaping form? Right. Because if you're talking about anything man-made, you're left with this question. We, if it's man-made, we're adding something to it. Well, where does the forming principle come that man uses to form all the things he creates? Yeah. Right. And uh, equally well, all the parts of man. What is this forming principle? Whether it's man-made or natural. Mm -hmm. If parts, if unity of parts, in nature, where do, what's this what's that forming principle that is present? Go ahead. And one has questions of a similar sort about the soul. Is it partless? Is it on the contrary composite? Has it something representing matter and something else representing form? Is the intelligence within it the equivalent of the shape of, a, of the statue and the sculptor giving it shape? Adopting the same method in regard to the cosmos, one will once more end up with an intelligence and think it the true maker and demiurge. The matter, then, is fire, water, earth, and air. Formation comes from yet another being, the soul. The soul it is that gives them their cosmic pattern. But the intelligence provides them with similar reason, reasons much as skill gives the soul of the artist norms of performance. For there is an intelligence that is the form of the soul, and there is the intelligence that gives the form to the soul, like the sculptor who gives shape to the statue, still possessing, still possessing the while all that is given, 
What gives to the soul is neighbor. Let me start that again. What it gives to the soul is neighbor to the true real. What body receives is image and imitation. Same issue. Formation comes from yet another being, the soul. Soul it is that gives them their cosmic pattern. Intelligence provides them the seminal reasons. Much as skill gives the soul of the artist norms of performance. For there is an intelligence that is the form of the soul. And there is the intelligence that gives the form to the soul. What it gives to the soul is neighbor to the true, uh, what's truly real. Body, image, and imitation. <clears throat> well, that's why we need another section. Right, Mark? I'm free. Jump in. Four? Yeah. But why must one go beyond the soul? Why not make it the supreme? First off, the intelligence is different from the soul and is its prior. There is no truth in the belief that the soul begets the intelligence. How could potentiality become actuality unless cause brought it about? Could chance effect it? Then it might never become actuality. What has to be admitted is that the primal beings are in act, sufficient unto themselves and perfect. Those that are sequent to them are imperfect and receive what perfection they have from their begetters. As children, imperfect when born, are brought to adulthood by their parents. Produced is to producing principle as matter is to form, and it is brought to perfection by its informing principle. If further the soul is thus changeable, while there must be somehow something unchangeable, else time would wear all away, this something must be prior to the soul. Again, there must be something prior to the soul since the soul is in the world. There has to be something outside a world that all body and matter has nothing enduring about it. Were there not, neither mankind nor the seminal reasons would know either survival or identity. Arguments such as these make clear that the intelligence must be prior to the soul. It's really interesting, isn't it? Because uh, would you agree it goes back to the central statement? What has to be admitted is that the primal beings are in act, <coughs> right? In act, <coughs> in their overflow, in the in the production, in act. <coughs> They're fish, sufficient unto themselves and perfect. Those that are, that are sequent to them are imperfect and receive what perfection they have from their begetters. Conclusion. Produced is the producing principle as matter is to form. This is brought to perfection by its informing principle. Ah. <coughs> Produced 
is to producing principles as matter is to form. But matter is, is uh, stuff. Ah, but it's brought to perfection because there is a informing principle. Oh, oh. It's not a dead universe. There's an informing principle. Right? And it's brought to perfection. By an informing principle. Ah, ah. Hey. In us, there's an informing principle. Oh. Oh. Ah. You know what? That informing principle is, you know, it's got to be prior to the soul. Yeah. Well, it's curious now, isn't it? Huh. Soul is in the world. There has to be something outside the world. Were it not, well, then the mankind would uh, run out, right? There'd be no survival or identity. There's something in us, you see, that is an informing principle. It's capable of being brought to perfection. Hmm. Well, this means in form of principle there's something that's, that's emerging. But wait a minute. This is eternity, all inclusive, all at once. So that informing principle is in, in matter, in us, that's different from this. Well, what's the relationship between the two? Huh. And that's where we have to go. <clears throat> Five. If words are going to mean anything, the intelligence must be understood not as intelligence in potency or intelligence evolving, which would, in any case, require another and prior intelligence, but as intelligence in actuality and for all eternity. It does not acquire thoughts. It has thoughts of itself. It thinks of itself and by itself. It is its thoughts. Were its thoughts a reality other than itself, its own reality would not be the object of its thinking, and it would be in potency and not an act. We should not separate these realities from one another, even though we are so inclined in thinking to do so. What then is this that is both the knower and the known? Hmm. It is, without doubt, authentically the intelligence. It thinks beings, and they are. It is these beings, for it will perceive them either as being somewhere else or as in itself and as itself. The somewhere else is out of the question. Where could it be? So they are itself and the content of itself. They are not things of sense, although that has been suggested. Sense existence is primal in no being. Form inherent in things of sense 
is imitation of, a th of authentic form. Every form that is in anything has come from another form and is its imitation. What is more, if the intelligence is maker of this all, it cannot think these things in order to produce them in this cosmos, or the cosmos would not yet exist. Such beings must exist before the cosmos, must not be typical of other beings, but must themselves be archetypal. They are the very essence of the intelligence. The suggestion might be made that the seminal reasons would suffice here, but then they must be eternal. If eternal, if immune to change, they must exist in the intelligence such as we have described it. A principle prior to condition to nature, to soul, for they are contingent existence. The intelligence accordingly is itself the authentic existence. It is not a knower that knows them as somewhere else. They are not prior to it. They are not after it. Of being, it is rather the lawgiver, or, better still, the law. Thus it is true to say that to be and to think are the same thing. And in beings that involve no matter, thinker and thought are identical. <clears throat> and I sought myself as a being. The theory of reminiscence bears on this as well. None of the beings is off in space, outside the intelligence. They all subsist in themselves without end, undergoing no change or decay. It is for this reason that they are real. Things that come and go have only borrowed being. Not they, but they on whom they draw are real. Only by such borrowing are sense objects the things we say they are, their substrate having received formation from elsewhere, as bronze from the sculptor's skill or wood from the carpenter's. The skill penetrates them and with form, penetrates them with form and yet remains integrally part apart from them, continuing to carry within it the reality of statue or bed. So it is with all corporeal things. This cosmos of ours, characteristically a participant in images itself, shows how copies differ from authentic beings. Against the variability of the first there is the unchanging quality of the second, reposing in themselves, not needing space because not having magnitude, possessing an existence intellective and self-sufficing. Bodies seek their sufficiency in others than their own kind. The intelligence, sustaining by its wondrous power all that would of themselves fail, seeks no stay anywhere. He didn't solve the problem yet, did he? What's his problem? He's mm. got a good one, right? It's a real good one. Um, we can do it this way. Okay. Um, this is an interesting level, isn't it? Observing symmetry and then observing the symmetry, right, then rising to the level of symmetry of all life. 
And then uh, when you're reflecting on that, you're actually knowing and contemplating the very idea of symmetry or perfect symmetry. And that's what is called what is. But look here. <coughs> Let's put here us. raises the question of whether or not you can make sense of two things. You can certainly move from here to here. The diversity of all things, differences throughout to here looking for commonness. So here is difference, here is same. And now, to go from there to this experience of the freed soul and what it experiences in this kind of state, would you not agree there's a gap between this realm, everyday world, rising to the level of reflection and this experience is a gap. <coughs> Everything he's saying can still be what he says and it can be perfectly true. but it doesn't account for that difference. Now, he's got this problem. I like it this way. The riddle of my friend Harry Trovidovich McGee. Esquire. He said, there is a distinct difference between his girlfriend, when he sees her in all her beauty, and when he can see the same thing in a mirror. <coughs> Thank goodness. Would you agree there's a loss? Sure. There's a loss when you go from that perfect beauty to an image. Mm -hmm. It's a stepped up. Would you agree there's a loss? There's a loss. Well, the basic model of this thinking is that this is the ideal and this is the real. But the gap between them is quite amazing. It isn't as, as different as this is. Because here, there's still something that persists with a certain sameness. Certainly, no life, no intelligence, just a fleeting image. Yeah, okay. But there's something that persists that we can say is enough to grant visibility and recognition. You say, no, no, when we're in this intellectual realm, this is the intelligible. Now he has another paper. He's saying, no, there is something here. This is the copy. This is our world. And this is the model. The same process between model and copy. And Dravidovich McGee's girlfriend and her image in a, in a mirror. That is to say the same language. It's the same, it's the same, but look here, would you agree? If we add up the differences here and the differences here, <clears throat> it's a major difference. Or, <clears throat> Same thing here. When the soul is freed and experiences a mystical state, how does that justify the fact that there's a world of intelligence such as he talked about it, that that can account for A and B? It can account for B, but can it, can it, can it account for A? 
Would you agree with questions like this? We often give it to Barbara first. No, we don't. No, okay, Barbara. No, no. <clears throat> that... Go ahead. Oh, no, 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 no. I enjoy the question, but I don't have an no, answer. No, no, what do you enjoy about it? What do I enjoy about it? Well, hmm. I presume you're not asking for an, an admiration of your artistry. Ah, 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 or you are. Let's see. <clears throat> Informing the question. Actually, um, well, that was, I told you I was really baffled by seven, but I had forgotten about five. Ah. So, ah. so this, um, and so what you're working on now, um, I hadn't seen that there was this tremendous gap. Mm. So, um, but I kept, I kept trying to focus on how he was describing the ideas. Yeah, right. And and that's good because that's where we're going. That's right. Eight. It's like, how is he? What are those ideas? Yeah. And yeah. Um, in the relation, it's not that you can't get. It's not that you can't understand his imagery or his metaphors, his analogies. You can, but that still doesn't take you to uh, what you want to see. Mm. So I appreciate your, your, your pointing out that in a way he hasn't, hasn't he hasn't known. filled it in. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and he may help with seminal reasons, but let's get there. All right. Who do you recommend to read? Any of the <clears throat> priors. People or can I work a bit more? Yeah. Mark? Sure. Good. We're on eight, you say? Six. 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 Six it is. And seven it will give Barbara eight. <laughs> <clears throat> Let it be said then that the intelligence is identical with these things and contains them all. Not locally, but as containing itself and being one with its content. All in it are one, and yet distinct. It is rather like the way the mind contains many items and branches of knowledge at the same time without any one of them merging into any other. At a given moment, each does what, it is, what is expected of it without involving any of the others. Every concept active singly. In this way, but with even greater unity, the intelligence is every one of these beings and not every one of the beings at the same time because each of the beings is a distinct power. Hmm. As the genus contains all the species, or as the whole contains all the parts, the intelligence contains all the beings. The seminal reasons provide an illustration of this. All the properties of a being are, in an undivided state, there as in one kernel the form of eye and the form of hand, for instance, whose difference is manifest only in the bodily organs they subsequently bring into being. For each of the seminal reasons is, with its content, an intelligence which has something spatial, as a liquid, for its matter, while it is itself the form complete and is identical with the generative soul. The generative soul, for its part, being the image of a higher soul. Sometimes the name nature is given to this seminal power. Partner to its prior, as light is to flame, it both transforms and informs matter. Not by push and pull and a working of levers, of which we hear so much, but by the soul of the... He's got another category, doesn't he, down here? <clears throat> we call all things, this is the realm of nature, and that's seminal reasons. So that helps slightly. Um,
But um, notice the analogy. The analogy he's given us, uh, he's going to go back to, but this is basically, as our mind is to the different systems that we may know, so in the intelligence on a higher level, the same thing takes place. <coughs> Right. Our systems of knowledge are complete and whole, and we can make divisions and distinctions and apply them in a variety of ways. And yet, it doesn't mean that uh, it cannot account for the many particulars it does. Mm -hmm. Because systems of knowledge can make distinctions all the way down to the particulars in their system. If the intelligence does that on a higher level, same process. Process the same. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, glad to hear it, but we're still after content and similarity. Mm -hmm. And so, seven it is. Pass it. How about it? Sure. Fifty-two. And Barbara will get eight, will she not? Cool. Okay. In the rational soul there is knowledge of sense objects. If one must call it knowledge, opinion would be the better word. It is of later origin than the objects since it is a reflection of them. There is also knowledge, <clears throat> truly knowledge this, of intelligible objects. It comes from the intelligence and traffics not with things of sense. Truly knowledge, it actually is everything it takes cognizance of. It is its own object and the thought of the object because the intelligence is the primals themselves, ever self-present, never compelled to seek or acquire. It is no journeyman, as is the soul, capital S, but immobile, the whole of all, not given to thought that being should be. It is not by its thinking God that a God exists. It is, it is not by its thinking movement that movement arises. That is why it is not correct to say that each of these forms is a thought, quote unquote. If one by, means by it that a thing exists or is made to exist because the intelligence has thought it. The object of intellection must exist before there is the act of intellection. If it did not, how would the intelligence come to know it? Certainly not by luck and haphazard. Well, uh, that's helpful, but it didn't do anything with our riddle. Would you agree Barbara has decided to do eight? <coughs> that's right. Oh, if then one. thought here is thought of an object and interior to the intelligence, that interior object is form and form is idea. Right. What's an idea? Form. What is idea? Oh, sorry. An intelligence or intellective essence. No idea is different from the intelligence, but is itself an intelligence. The intelligence in its totality is made up of the ideas, and each of the ideas is each of the intelligences. In the same way, a science in its totality is made up of theories, and each of the theories is a part of the total science, a part that is not spatially separate from its fellows, but, in the totality, having its distinctive qualities for all of that. The intelligence is in itself. It possesses itself. Is itself ever ch unchanging abundance. If prior to being, it would be, by its thought and action, the begetter of being. But we are unable to conceive of existence not preceding what knows it. So it were better to say that the beings are the content of its thought, that its actual thought is as proximate to the beings as the act of fire is to fire, so that they, in their inmost, are as proximate to the intelligence as they are to their own proper act. But being also is an act, 
Hence, the act of the intelligence and the act of being are one sole act. I lost my place. Or better, the intelligence and being are one. They are the same nature. The same nature, too, are the beings as the act of the intelligence and the act of being. In this sense, the ideas, too, are the same nature as the idea of being, its form, and its act. It is only our way of thinking that splits them up. Quite different is the intelligence that, itself un undivided, does not divide up either being or beings. So, hi. Um, what did that illuminate? <laughs> hmm. It illuminated the realm, didn't it? Mm -hmm. Back here. The intelligible. Tells us more about right. ideas. Yes. But our mystery remains. Mm -hmm. Gives us a lot about intelligence. Mm -hmm. Nine. We need nine to save us. Good. What in the intelligence do we thus split up? There is no escape. We must list them all as they are, much as one would catalog the various constituents of some one science. The cosmos is a living organism capable of containing every form of life within it. From another realm it draws its existence and its mode of existing. That realm has as source the intelligence. The intelligence, therefore, contains the archetype of the cosmos and is itself the intelligible realm, what Plato in the Timaeus calls the ideal animal. Given the seminal reason of animal and matter that is receptive to it, inevitably an animal comes into existence. Similarly, given the intelligence all-powerful, inevitably there is formation and formed, since no obstacle intervenes between giver and receiver. All is held by the cosmic recipient in division. Here man, there son, while in the giver all remains one. So therefore, how does he solve the problem? He goes to Plato's time heirs. Mm -hmm. That's the model. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's the model. He fills this plenty. He gives us great insight into what the intelligible is, but essentially, it comes out of the time is. Hmm. But does it answer our question? Hmm. No. What's our question? Besides, if you agree, meaning if someone were ur urging us to look at our everyday world, what we call nature, diversity. He says you can observe in nature symmetry in visible things. Agree? Yes, sir. And from that, you even get to the idea that there's symmetry in all life that you perceive, and in general, symmetry of life. You can go further, and you can exercise the faculty on this, because it's a way of knowing and reflecting as you do that. That's a contemplation. You're really working an idea called perfect symmetry, aren't you? By the way, the idea of perfect symmetry is a very good way of talking about the intelligible perfect symmetry. Now for the rest of the essay, he's going to talk about the symmetry of the intelligible realm. What we want to know is, can he explain this intelligible realm as a model such that it can explain all the differences we discover in our world of nature. You're here. He says, you know what? Uh, and all the arts were guided by symmetry all over the place. The idea of symmetry runs through it all. And by the way, when man finally uh, adds beauty to his contemplation, not to his works, he can actually get in that state where you can separate the soul from the body and experience a state of mind independent of the body, mystical state. 
Would you agree, because you have that mystical state here, separation of self from the body, does it give us an insight to understand the difference between nature and that experience? No. That's, the, that's our, what we call the riddle. Thank you. He helps us greatly on this realm. The intelligible, a lot of things are added. But to account for this, he's saying, by the way, it's the time he is. And we're ordered, of course, to take another look at another section, which is why I guess there's another section to the work. So, or let's put it another way. All right. <clears throat> uh, what's the problem with nature? The problem with nature is that within nature, that's us. But that's the realm of soul. He has to explain how soul relates to the natural world and how it relates then to the world of ideas. And we really haven't gotten into how he talks about the nature of the soul. But that's urgent, isn't it? Because that's the world we live in. And most clearly, if we can understand that and see its relationship to the intelligible, we'll be closer to understanding the problem that we have. Or is it a problem? Big time. No. Why? Because um, what difference is this? This is a strange <clears throat> world of confusion and Pardon? suffering that we live in. And it, it's if this is all we had, would you be saying, "Well, we don't need anything more"? No, I wouldn't be saying that. Because he has Because we really haven't understood man and nature either. <laughs> now, he's going to give us more information on this. But this is where we need to go. Does he go there? And it's likely that there's another section. Oh, okay. what's, the, what's the next section? Ten. Oh, the next section. You have the, the, the descent of the soul? Oh, that's what we need. Oh, uh -huh. oh. But wait a minute, we need more than actually the descent of the soul is good. Do we have, let's see. We should do the descent of the soul mm -hmm. uh, with the soul. Which, right? We should do those two together. Um, and well, there's more in Plotinus than just this on the soul, by the way. But okay. this is central. What? I second that. Oh, good. Oh, good, okay. good, good, good. So, the descent of the soul. All right. And that helpful will get us, huh? hey, from the intelligible to us. And then, as you can take a look at... Uh, see, when he deals with soul, remember, he's got two issues. And that's a curious one, which is uh, soul with a capital S and small s, right? Uh, Atman and Jiva. Yeah, yeah, pardon? Atman and Jiva. No, no. Yeah, I know, a different no, system, but... No. By the way, if there's something common in a set of things that are growing like that, would you say there should be some idea of tree? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. If there is such a thing as soul, should there not be one soul? <coughs> or world soul? Soul of the world. Right, soul of the world. So the relation between soul of the world and soul, particular soul, is going to be one of his big issues. Hmm. And, uh, so we can read these sections, but are there other that you want to recommend? Well, I thought what we'd do after this, uh, we're going to finish the. What? We're going to finish that one. Well, Barbara already did that when you you were out. She. Well, no, she covered all of the rest of it. <laughs> but I must have been out of body. <laughs> no, no, sure. We started with it. Yeah. Oh, with yeah, the we I didn't do it in particular. Backwards. Oh, all right. Yeah. Excellent. So if we do the scent, the scent of the soul next time, and the soul, soul on 125, uh -huh. and the third step, Rod has agreed to recommend certain sections of the soul from the Plotinus that we'll get Xerox copies of. Fantastic. Thank you, Rod. Thank you. Weeks, right? Yeah. Because Rod 
has made a great study of it, and it would appreciate his help on that. Great. And when in doubt, we can always push him to the tip of a piece of chalk to help us with it. <laughs> we're not quitting, are we? Sir? We're not quitting, are we? Yes. It is only 10.40. We started early. <laughs> started early. Oh, early. oh, you guys started early? Oh, man. Well, I wrote something. Good. It, what do you got? It just happens to relate to it. Here. But yeah, Lyndon has a question. I'm, I'm having a little bit of a problem. Well, then we'll miss it. Just miss it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if it's only I'll a little bit of a problem. A little bit of a problem. With that business of accidents, accidents, accidents. Yes. I'm wondering. I'm going. What could be the origin of accidents, and is there some relationship, like a sophisticated, you know, sidestepping as a sophist would of the yeah. issue of evil by using that concept? I think you move from the first question to the second. Let me make sure. Okay. Right. Oh, well, there was two, but the most important is if if he's explaining in the material world that accidents are the the cause of that. There has to. No, where is it I'm, in the? the whole, whole, whole. Fensky did a great study of this, and uh, Fensky is one of Barbara's friends. Yeah, that's true. And My old neighborhood. And what he did is, he said, let us grow perfect peas. And so Finsky grew perfect peas. Under the most ideal circumstances, expecting every one would be just like every other one. But somehow when they looked at each one, there was a slight difference. How do you account for the difference? Could it be the position they had in the pod? Could there, what other factors could contribute to their differences? A whole bunch of physical things, could it not? Accidents. Accidents. <coughs> well, that's true. Accidents, in, nature. In the material world, yeah. you know, okay. it has to That's have... why I wanted to answer the first one first, because I knew how to answer it. Oh, okay. Okay. But it's the second one. Go ahead. Uh, Cause, cause and I don't think you have any problem with the first one either, by the way. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. There's also, you know, if accidents are what appears to be evil, it appears what to be, appears to to, be evil... Oh, well, as long as it appears to be evil, yeah, it's true. That's how he's sidestepping the issue of <laughs> evil in the ideal world, is that correct? Well, I, why would it be sidestepping, it seems to me, to answer it? Well, yes. but I don't, I, I'm still having a problem because if that's the case, accidents have to have their origin in the ideal world and the intelligible, and where does that come from? Do you mean the form of accident? No, the, the concept as, as it materializes Thank in the you. material world, you know, it's like, the problem between the okay. origin and the copy, the original and the copy. Uh, okay. How does that happen? I don't get it. <coughs> to quote someone, it's a riddle to me that I don't get. Do you have a question or a position? Uh, or both? Both. I'm... You're locating accidents in the intelligible. No, yes. I'm trying, you know, he didn't say, he just says accidents, like... It's hanging out there on the tree. Uh, everything else is, you know, connected except for the conundrum of the ideal. And I'm going, uh, I don't get it. I think, so you're like a white man, right? That, I think that's an accident. Is this your position? Can He's an astrologer as well. Accident. Astrologer, another accident. Be considered as well, no, then they don't think anything's an accident. I yes, think. that's correct. And nature. That's correct. <coughs> right. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But um, it all depends upon first what you mean by this term.
because I take the position that there is no such thing as absolute evil which leads to the problem of dualism, I have to use the, the term appearance. Well, okay. okay. Appearance. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it can be considered. Yes. If you mean uh, appearance not genuine, not real, then why do you need the word evil? Um. I mean, if there isn't any evil, then how can there be an appearance of evil? Well, then, the issue of an accident, could it be the appearance of accidents? Could you again, please? Could it be not accidents, but the appearance of accidents? Oh, I'll, you know. Now, now you're raising the word accidents, purpose. Correct. Then it wouldn't be an accident. And that's what I'm still struggling with, is the origin of this concept about... Oh, but see, watch, if you put appearance here... Can there sum up the appearance of accidents? Right. be considered as not evil, but now good. Right. <clears throat> right. And evolutionists would go along with it. Random factors produce a certain kind of response <coughs> to the organism which Let's may have an coffee. adaptive function and then it goes on. But, but the origin for me is not random, it is intelligible. Okay, then it's not an appearance of active. Then you're saying the sum of it, of the appearance of accidents uh, must, be, must be considered as an intelligible force. Correct. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That's right. Okay. That would be right, giving that, purpose that and intelligibility to the same totality of accidents. But he doesn't explain that. No, he says it's a difference. He says it is a separate okay. entity. Yeah. So you have intelligence that's perfect and good. But somewhere the soul in the seminal dis uh, distribution of some type presents a main or a problem or an accident. Yeah. This yeah. is what he states here. So it separates at the soul level. It doesn't start at the intelligible level. It's created by the soul level by not being fulfilled somewhere. That's, is that what you're saying? Yeah, that's what this says. That's what Plotinus said. Somewhere at that point. No, for me, in the presentation and the reading, what we just went through isn't there. He just says, oh, it's because of accidents. And so my question was filling in the details of how it's related to his cosmology. Yeah. What are accidents like? Right. It's not going to go into the direction of a lot of accidents in nature. There's not going to be biology or some kind of study of nature in order to account for accidents and what are what what you can say about it, whether there's intelligibility in nature or not. Yeah. He's not into that. That's right. Okay. Yeah. 
What's the issue with accidents? It's gone. <laughs> is, it, is it? You're in the other one. It's gone. <laughs> because. What are accidents? Now it's the appearance of some of the occurrence of accidents that must be considered as an intelligible force. Okay. Okay. Okay.